Hello, I'm David D. Cosmo, and this is Preview, a public affairs program on Electric City Television. I continue to broadcast from my home in accordance with the stay-at-home advisory issued by both the federal and state governments. We're all at home, and most folks are looking for something to do. Well, perhaps your local library may have some answers. Our guest today is Mary Garham, who is administrator of the Lackawanna County Library System. Mary, the library system, counting the bookmobile, has about, oh, a dozen outlets, I'd say. Are they all physically closed at this time? Hi, David. Yes. Um, we were closed on March 13th by order of the state. Um, we were originally hoping to reopen on April 6th, um, and then the governor extended that to uh, an indefinite closure. We're assuming that that might be April 30th, but you know, depending on the news and how things go, it may be that um, that that could be extended. Well, as we talked before going uh, on the air. Uh, the fact that the buildings are shut down does not mean that library services uh, have ceased. Uh, that's a little surprising uh, to most folks who may think of the library as uh, a physical building. You walk in, you uh, pick out the book you want and you know, take it home, read it, and then bring it back. So what kinds of services are you able to offer without those physical buildings? So we are <clears throat> really missing our patrons. Obviously, a big part of what we do is seeing people walk in the doors and helping them to find the books that they want to read, helping them use our computers. Um, but we have, over the years, really built up what we think of as our virtual library. And there are so many ways now that we can connect with our patrons online. Um, and Frankly, there's never been a better time to get a library card. Um, if you have a library card, you have access to all of the wonderful things that we're going to talk about today. Now, can, um, you, can you get that card uh, uh, by virtue of using your computer? Absolutely. So um, the first place to go is to our website, and that is lclshome.org. And on that website, you're going to be able to see um, a button up in the top right-hand corner that says Join. If you click on that button, you will uh, be asked to fill out a very brief, very simple application for a card. And you will receive by return email um, a library card number that you can use to get access to all of our online services. And what kinds of things can you do? When I, when I checked the computer earlier today, I noticed right away, first thing that popped out to me, I saw movies. Yes. Yes. So um, we have uh, recently added um, a collection of movies to our, um, to our offerings. It is called Canopy, and it's something that we have put out specifically during this period because we know that people are looking for things to do. You can't get into a movie theater today, um, and if you don't have um, a subscription to one of the online streaming services, this is something that you can do for free. Um, a lot of there are feature films and documentaries, and what you might think of as art house kinds of films available. Um, uh, it's a service called Canopy, K A N O P Y. Um, you're not going to find the same stuff you find on, on Netflix or, or you know, uh, Hulu or, or one of those um, services. But there are lots of really interesting um, uh, films that are available there, including things for children. Well, that's one of the other questions I had. Uh, so many people have the kids at home right now, and there's two categories of concerns for the kids. Uh, one is entertainment, of course. So, Absolutely. can you provide some of that for them? You bet. So, um, we have a number of things that are happening with kids right now and for children. Um, our children's librarians have been really active on social media and they are doing virtual story times. Um, if you go to um, 
uh, any of our, uh, if you go to the website again and look at the library, you know, search a library near you, you'll see uh, how to get to their, their social media pages. Um, the Abington Library, I can use as an example, or the Lackawanna County Children's Library, they are scheduling regular story times uh, for children. Um, there's usually one at Abington, there's one during the day, and there's one at bedtime. Uh, the one from the Children's Library is, is going out, um, I think, around uh, 6 o'clock or so. Um, and, and it's wonderful. So, you know, kids get to see the, the children's librarians that they're accustomed to seeing in person. They see them online. They get to see them, you know, reading some books and singing some songs and doing all the things that they would do if, if they were together um, at the library. So those are wonderful things that, that we can do in terms of entertainment. We also have lots of um, books and things that are available for kids. We have, um, we have, excuse me, we recently added a new collection of books called Tumble Books. And Tumble Books is a series of ebooks that is specifically intended for children. Um, it's a wonderful collection. It's interactive stuff. Um, and it's a, um, it's, you can find it, again, on our website. And it's something that I think um, parents will be very happy to sit their kids down uh, with because it is, uh, it's both educational and fun. Um, we also are doing some, uh, some things for kids who are at home and for parents who's, uh, who are you know, at home with their children and trying to keep up with schoolwork. Yeah. Um, probably yeah. one of the most important things that we have available is a service called tutor.com. And it's just like it sounds. It's a tutoring service. Um, so if your child is having trouble with um, anything um, related to um, schoolwork, whether your child is in elementary school, middle school, or high school, there will be live tutoring available for them. Um, it's a wonderful service, and it's something that can you know, really help uh, not just with um, not just with the school where kids are being assigned while they're out, but if there's something that they're particularly interested in learning and and you know advancing in on their own, it's a great place to go. Um, we also have um, a, something called Learning Express Library, which is one of our resources online. And Learning Express Library um, will give uh, high school students access to the SAT and ACT practice tests. So um, if you're home and you didn't get around to taking the SAT and uh, you still have time to do that, um, here's a great place to go for uh, free practice tests. Um, or if you've taken the SAT and you'd like to get your, your score up a little bit higher, here's a good place to go and, and learn what to do with it. Um, we also have um, something called Academic One File. And Academic One File is um, um, a list of uh, journals that are perhaps more research oriented in nature, but um, it's great for any, um, any uh, college students uh, who may be at home writing papers to finish up their semester. Um, it's a place to go and, and look for that kind of information as well. Well, it would seem then that, that there is an offering in terms of the educational opportunity uh, for youngsters. It would seem there's an opportunity for virtually every age group. Absolutely. And in fact, it's interesting because if you are an adult and you're thinking about going back to school, if you're looking at um, perhaps taking um, some kinds of uh, tests to get into different kinds of jobs, a lot of that, those learning experiences are available to you as well. The best place to go to look for, for all of this stuff is um, on our website. Um, if you look at lclshome.org, and click on the find button. It will ask. It, it will give you several options. And if you um, choose explore e-resources, that's where you're going to see all of these various kinds of learning opportunities for everyone from children through adults. When it comes to the uh, reading, the story time. Uh, you said even even uh, bedtime stories. Who's actually doing that reading? So it's our librarians. Um, it's uh, most of them are doing it through Facebook Live, and um, they are. Um, they're, and, and what's wonderful about that is that those uh, recordings are then archived on their on their social media pages, so that if you miss it, you know, if you if you're not there um, when they're when they're reading live, you can uh, come back later and uh, and watch the recording of it. Um, 
but this is something that started up very quickly as soon as as soon as our libraries closed. Um, our librarians knew that they really wanted to be able to stay in touch with children. Uh, they knew that kids would be missing their routines, which might have included a, a regular weekly trip to the story to story hour at the library. And this was this is their way of reaching out and um, and connecting with them. We also have um, a couple of people who are doing reading chapter books, one chapter a night, um, for kids who are a little bit older. You know, kids who might be in you know fourth through sixth grades. Um, so that's been that's been an interesting uh, way of doing things as well. One of the one of the major uh, efforts. One of the outreaches uh, that the library has been involved in for many years now is, uh, you know, read across Scranton or read across the county. Uh, has that fallen by the wayside because of the virus? So usually the, the Scranton Reads um, uh, event usually takes place in the autumn. So that's something that um, we hope we'll be able to do uh, when the time comes. We were planning to have um, a lecture this spring that would be the American Masters Lecture uh, sponsored by the Lackawanna County Library System. Um, it was to feature David Sedaris, who is um, a humorist and author, um, just a wonderful person. And uh, we had actually uh, sold out the Scranton Cultural Center for that event. Um, but shortly before, uh, shortly after it became uh, obvious that um, social distancing was going to be uh, the order of the day, um, he canceled his tour. Um, so we have rescheduled for next year. Um, we will uh, bring him back in April of next year, and, and we certainly all hope that by that time um, we'll be able to fill the cultural center again and, and feel comfortable sitting next to one another. Um, there's also something that is uh, going on at the moment um, online on our OverDrive platform. Overdrive is um, our uh, our service that provides free ebooks and downloadable audiobooks um, for our patrons. Um, usually, it works the same way that a, a library collection does, a physical collection. So, if you borrow a book, it's not available to anybody else. But every now and then, they do something special, and they have they're doing that at the moment. They have selected a book. It's an interesting memoir about. Um, uh, a young man with autism, and uh, that book is now available to anybody who wants to read it for simultaneous use. So um, it's kind of a good way to lead into talking a little bit about um, our collections of ebooks and audiobooks. We um, have long had um, the, those uh, collections available. They are being used now more than ever, as as you might imagine, since the libraries have closed. Um, so we, um, we are working hard to keep those collections um, growing. Um, and in fact, we just added a collection of classic materials, um, about uh, over 4,000 of them. So, you know, if you've been, you know, waiting to, you know, go back and look at all that stuff that you didn't read when you were in high school or maybe in college, um, it's a great opportunity to look at uh, classic literature. Um, but also available are um, a number of books that are excellent books that are now no longer subject to copyright. So they're older books, but they're not necessarily just classic literature. But you know, if uh, you know if you were hoping to see *Call of the Wild* in theaters and didn't get there, well, now you can you can read the book and <laughs> you can find now, out. Now, how how does that how does that work, Mary? If uh, if you want to uh, check out a particular book, uh, how would one do that at home? So we have two services. Um, the one that, that I've just been talking about is called Overdrive. And if you go to um, our web page and, and click on the Find button, you will see uh, something that talks about downloading ebooks and audiobooks. And you would look for either Overdrive or RB Digital. Those are two, two different services, uh, but they both do uh, both ebooks and audiobooks. Um, and then you basically, when you're on a website and you do some searching, you can, uh, you can, you know, it will make recommendations to you to show you what's available. So would you see a menu, you a, a menu a of, a, of available stories? I'm sorry? Would you see a menu come up of available stories? Yes, you'll see that, and you and there's also a search box that lets you just put in something that you might be particularly interested in. Um, 
we have um, a lot of ebooks, a lot of audio books. Um, there are a lot of people who uh, like to listen to books um, rather than read them. And if you're you know, social distancing by you know walking outside or something of that nature, it's a great uh, time to just you know download it to your phone and plug in your earphones and, and take a nice long walk. It makes time go by quickly. Um, so so we're really happy with with uh, those collections. If you don't have a library card. Um, again, uh, you can get a library card online at our website just by clicking on the join button. By return email, of email, you will get a library card number. That's the only thing you need to be able to get into, um, into this collection of downloadable materials. In the past, you've been able to help people with uh, uh, income tax in terms of learning what to fill out and, and how to do it. Uh, of course, the deadline has been moved along. Uh, might they go through the library to still get the information they need? So that's actually a service that we partner with an outside agency to do for us. Um, and they, uh, it, they, actually, it's, they actually do the uh, making of appointments and whatnot, but many of our libraries have done that. And it's a great service. If, you, you know, if you're not comfortable doing your taxes, it's a, a good opportunity for you to come and have somebody help you for free um, to do that. Um, we're going to have to wait and see. I mean, at this point, taxes have been pushed back to June 15th. I certainly hope that we'll be back in our libraries at that point in time. Um, I am learning not to plan more than about a day in advance at this point because things change so frequently and, and so rapidly. Um, but it is something that um, our libraries, if they have the opportunity to do it, will certainly be providing um, in the future. Um, another thing that we've been promoting online, um, and it's something you can do online, is uh, the census. Um, it's something that's really important for all of our communities, um, and it is um, uh, something we really want to make sure that we get a good count with. Um, the Census Bureau had intended to um, try to get people to do uh, the census online, to fill out their census form online um, as much as possible. And we're planning, we're working very closely with libraries because so many people use our computers rather than computers that you know, they may not have themselves. And so we're disappointed that we're not able to welcome people into our libraries to, um, to complete their forms but we are doing a lot to try to, uh, to encourage them to, uh, to complete their forms one way or another. Um, if you complete your form online, um, you know, you're done. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes. There's only a few questions. Um, if you don't do that, there's also a phone number that you can call um, and, and, um, and actually uh, you know, do it that way. Um, the last uh, way that they would do it would be to send people out census takers to come to your house to um, to actually help you fill out the form. And of course, that's not something that can happen uh, right. at the moment because of, of the situation that we're in. But the census is so important for all of us, and we're really trying to encourage people to do it and, and not to be afraid of it. It's an easy thing to do, and it is um, the information in it is kept confidential for 70 years. Only the statistical data is available before that. So, um, so if you're concerned about what kind of personal information might be getting out there, it's not something to worry about. Yeah, it's really yeah, more it's really of, a, of, a, of a count than, uh, than anything else. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And in fact, if you uh, received a mailing from the Census Bureau and, and it has a code on it, that code is specific to your address, not to your name or, or anything more personal than that. With regard to all of the services that the library offers, if, if someone does have computer access, uh, they, they can even Google Lackawanna County Library System. Uh, is there a fairly easy menu to negotiate then for whatever they're looking for? Absolutely. Um, so we have um, our website is, has a lot of information on it. Um, there's news items. There are buttons that will take you to doing research, to looking for ebooks and audiobooks. There are um, one of the things that we've been doing during this um, during this situation is we have increased our um, email newsletter to a daily newsletter. Um, we used to do it weekly. It's now daily. It's brief. Usually has three or four items in it that um, that will help you. Uh, 
find out a little bit, that'll highlight a little bit of what's available on our website. If you have a library card and, and an email address, it's going to come to you automatically. It's called Live and Learn in Lackawanna County. And um, there are lots of really um, interesting uh, things that you'll find in there. And it's stuff that's available at our libraries, programs that are available virtually, and then just generally um, reliable information that you can, you can count on, uh, whether it's related to your health or your finances or whatever. You know, we're sharing that information out as well couple quick mechanical questions. Um, what if someone took a book out right before the uh, virus uh, problem started and they say, gee, I, I hope I'm not going to get a big fine because I can't get it back? Absolutely. Um, so at this point we are, first of all, we're asking people to keep their books at home. We're not supposed to be in our libraries. Um, that's you know part of the, the edict that came from the state. Um, so um, we're asking people um, to keep their books at home rather than trying to return them to the libraries. Um, if you go to the library, for the libraries who have uh, book drops that, that actually lock, you won't be able to get anything in there anyway. Um, but, uh, you know, so we're not checking them as regularly as we might do. Uh, we'd love you to just keep them, hold on to them until, until everything reopens. Um, but we have uh, changed all of our due dates. Um, at this point, the due date is May 15th, so that's a good uh, good month away yet, and so we're hopeful again that that will be um, a time when we can, uh, you know, when we can be open again and, and welcome people back. If for some reason we're not there by May 15th, we will extend that due date again. So there will be no fines assessed on any materials that have been borrowed and are due back um, during this quarantine period. Um, we... Um, we uh, are are anxious to see people, um, and we're hoping that we'll be able to uh, to see them. And we want to welcome the back, them back. We don't want anybody to have to worry that there's going to be any any money that they have to to owe to us. Well, as buildings uh, are reopened, when that happens, uh, most of course uh, public buildings are going to have to go through some sort of uh, disinfection process too. You've got again. Counting the bookmobile, about a dozen outlets there. Uh, that's quite a task. It is. It is. And uh, not all of our libraries have dedicated maintenance staff. Uh, many of them rely on contractors who, you know, might come in once a week or so. So we have been talking and paying very careful attention to all of the recommendations that are coming through from the CDC. Um, and, and we'll follow all of those recommendations regarding sanitizing, not just materials, but also our buildings. Um, and that will take place in advance of any reopening that might take place. Well, it sounds well, it like sounds you've got like your, you your, your ducks in order, so to speak. Uh, one last time for people who want to reach the library uh, by way of their, uh, their smartphone or their computer, what do they do? So the best way to get in touch with us is to use the website. It's lclshome.org, O-R-G. And um, on that website, you're going to find um, a contact uh, information kind of, so, so you, can, you can click the contact us form and send your question to us that way. Um, we do have, most of our libraries are checking voicemail. So if you want to leave a message, if there's something not urgent, that's another opportunity for you. Um, you can also, um, on our website, find all of the information that we've been talking about today. Um, and it's a great time if you've got time on your hands. It's a good opportunity to explore and see what's there that you know, maybe you, you never thought you might find. Um, and again, it's really easy right now to get a library card. Um, we'll get it out to you within a day or so. And um, you can click on the Join button. We'll ask for just a couple of pieces of information, and uh, we'll send you a number that you can use to access all of the resources that are available for free from the library. And Mary, I guess we should really close by reminding everyone that while we've been talking about the Lackawanna County library system, that probably wherever you're watching your local library, chances are they're doing something to stay in touch. 
Absolutely. Um, so I would strongly recommend that you look at your library's social media pages. Um, they're posting all kinds of interesting information, sometimes informative, sometimes entertaining, sometimes um, interactive. And so um, to find that, you can look at the list of libraries on the web page and you will see their, their social media addresses there as well. Um, and one thing that um, I should mention too, um, and this is kind of an unusual uh, benefit, um, but if you, have, um, if you do not have access to the internet at home um, and you need it, um, one of the things that you can do is um, visit one of our libraries and park in the parking lots and, and the Wi-Fi will, uh, will be available for you to, to use from outside the building. It doesn't work on all of our buildings. For example, the Albright Memorial Library is, has, is an older building and has such thick walls that the Wi-Fi can't, can't escape. <laughs> but, but most of our suburban libraries um, will be, do have Wi-Fi that's available from outside the building. Okay. Mary Garm, Administrator of the Lackawanna County Library System, thank you so much for joining us today, and let's hope that that day when the library doors uh, come open again come uh, sooner than later. I certainly hope so, and, and I hope when that happens, David, you'll come and visit us. Great. Thank you, Mary. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye now. Well, that's our preview program for this week. I'm David DeCosmo for Electric City Television. Till we see you again next time, here's hoping all your news is good.